Whenever you are performing a web assessment that includes authentication mechanisms, it's always advised to check cookies, sessions, and try to figure out how access control really works. In many cases, a remote code execution attack and a foothold on the system might not be achievable by itself, but rather after chaining different types of vulnerabilities and exploits. Hello everyone, I welcome you all to a new video. In this video, we are going to enumerate the information disclosure and broken access control types of vulnerabilities. These vulnerabilities seem not very important but they can have a great impact while attacking a system. Before I start to enumerate our target make sure you have already installed two important applications that are Mozilla Firefox and Verb Suite. Enumeration We are going to start our enumeration by searching for any open ports using the Nmap tool. We can spot port 22, SSH, and port 80, HTTP, as open. We visit the IP using the web browser where we face a website for automotive. On the homepage, it is possible to locate interesting information about how one can access the services through login. According to this information, the website should have a login page. Before we proceed with the directory and page enumeration, we can try to map the website by using the Burp Suite proxy to passively spider the website. Burp Suite is a powerful security testing application that can be used to perform web requests on web applications, mobile apps, and thick clients. Burp offers multiple capabilities such as web crawler, scanner, proxy, repeater, intruder, and many more. First, we will start Burp Suite and configure the browser to send traffic through the proxy. Now, navigate to Proxy tab, and under Intercept, sub-tab select the button where Intercept is off so to enable it. Now click on Foxy Proxy Extension, and enable Burp Suite Proxy. Now that everything is set up correctly, let's refresh the page in our browser. Now switch to Burp Suite and forward the HTTP request. Now, switch to the Target tab and then on the Sitemap option. It is possible to spot some directories in files that weren't visible while browsing. One that is indeed very interesting it's the directory of login. We can visit it in our browser and indeed we are presented with the login page. As we have no valid credentials to get login access. But, there is also an option to login as a guest. Trying that and now we are presented with a couple of new navigation options as we are logged in as guest. After navigating through the available pages, we spot that the only interesting one seems to be the uploads. However, it is not possible to access it as we need to have super admin rights. Now, we need to find a way to escalate our privileges from user guest to super admin role. One way to try this is by checking if cookies and sessions can be manipulated. Let's examine the portal further in Burp. We refresh the accounts page, which displays the user ID for our current user and intercepts the request. We notice what seems to be a custom cookie implementation, comprising of the user value and role. We also notice the ID parameter which for our current admin user is 2. It might be possible to brute force the ID values and display the user value for another user, such as the super admin account. We can do this using Burp's intruder module. Click Ctrl plus I to send the request to intruder. We press clear to remove the pre-populated payload positions, select the ID value, 2, and click add. Next. Click on the Payloads tab. We can generate a sequential list of 1 to 100 using a simple bash loop using an online bash compiler. Now copy the output and click on the paste to paste into the payload box. 
Next, click on the Options tab, ensure that Follow Redirections is set to Always, and select the option to process cookies and redirections. Now, click on the Target tab, and then click Start Attack. We sort responses by length and view the results. A few of the responses have a different length, and we proceed to examine them. The super admin account is visible, and the corresponding user value is identified. There are two admins that I have found by using the brute forcing attack. After a try, I found that ID 1 is admin and ID 30 is super admin. I think, there is a mistake with this machine. The upload is only possible with the admin with ID 1. Let's try to access the uploads page again, substituting our user value with the admin. We have finally got access to the upload form. Foothold. Now that we got access to the upload form, we can attempt to upload a PHP reverse shell. Instead of creating our own one, we will use an existing one. You can find the code from GitHub. Copy this code and paste it to Notepad or Notepad. Now, modify the code so it can suit our needs. We are going to change the listening host IP and the listening port variables to match our settings and then we will attempt to upload the file. We have finally managed to upload it. Now we might need to brute force directories in order to locate the folder where the uploaded files are stored but we can also guess it. The uploads directory seems to be a logical assumption. We confirm that by running also the GoBuster tool. The GoBuster immediately found the uploads directory. We don't have permission to access the directory but we can try to access our uploaded file. But first, we will need to set up a Netcat connection. Then request our shell through the browser. Now check the listener. We got a reverse shell. In order to have a functional shell though we can issue a Python 3 TTY cheat sheet. Let me check user details using the whoami command. As the user www data. We can't achieve many things as the role has restricted access to the system. We can check the available users are on the system by reading the etc slash password file so we can try password reuse of this password. We found a new user named Robert. You can find the user flag from the Robert home directory. Since the website is making use of PHP and SQL, we can enumerate further the web directory for potential disclosures or misconfigurations. After some search, we can find some interesting PHP files under var, www, html, cdncgi, login directory. Let's read the db.php file if there is any username and password available or not. As I thought. I got the password for the user Robert. In order to log in as this user, we will use the su command. 
Before that, let me go back to the home directory. Now run Sue Robert. Some problem it there. Try it again. Now input the password. Now, we have successfully logged in. Privilege Escalation Before running any privilege escalation or enumeration script, let's check the basic commands for elevating privileges like sudo and id. We observe that user Robert is part of the group bug tracker. Let's try to see if there is any binary within that group. We found a file named bug tracker. We check what privileges and what type of file is it. There is a sword set on that binary, which is a promising exploitation path. Now, we will execute the bug tracker and provide a bug ID. As you can see we got root permissions. The root flag can be found in the root folder. Now, we got both the flags. Congratulations. Sorry to say but I have already completed this machine a few days before, but you can find the answers from my blog. If you have any doubts and queries then write me a comment below in my comment section.